Faisal Zawed and welcome to the very first video of my deep learning mini course. In this series, I'll be teaching you how to implement deep learning for computer vision. This series has no correlation with your age, but semester you are in or your job designation. The only prerequisite for this mini course is the desire to learn more. So this video will cover the following. First of all, we'll download and install Python 3 in case you don't have it installed already. Next, we'll understand what virtual environment is and why is it needed. Next, we'll create and activate our virtual environment. Next, we'll install TensorFlow so we can leverage Keras, which is a high-level API in TensorFlow 2.0. And lastly, we'll import libraries in Jupyter Notebook and display the version on our screen. So that's about it and that covers the scope of this video. So first of all, we need to download and install Python. And for that, you need to visit this link, which is python.org slash downloads. Here, all you need to do is click on this download button and an executable file will be downloaded on your machine. It's going to be a very simple wizard and Python 3 would be installed on your machine in no time. I have it installed on my machine, so I'm not gonna proceed. Let me cancel the download. Let's move back to our notebook. Now let's try to understand what virtual environment actually is and why is it needed. So virtual environments are used to separate different Python environments for different projects. By default, all packages are installed inside packages directory and all the projects use the same directory. Now imagine that you work on two deep learning projects in parallel. One of them uses TensorFlow 1.5 and the other one uses TensorFlow 2.0. In this case, you won't be able to use multiple versions of TensorFlow because you don't have separate environments. And that's the reason we need virtual environments, so we can create different virtual environments for different projects. You create a virtual environment for a project and install only the modules required by that project. So now let's go ahead and try creating a virtual environment. We'll be using the Ven tool. Ven is a very powerful tool that creates isolated Python environments for Python libraries. It's available from Python 3.3 onwards. Before we create the virtual environment, let's have a look at already installed modules. I'll move to my terminal and type pip freeze. So as you can see, it's a very lengthy list of modules that are installed in my site packages directory. So here's a command for creating a virtual environment. Before we create a new virtual environment, let's check if I already have any existing virtual environments. For that, I'll move to terminal and type lsa and search for mhj. So there is no virtual environment having mhj in it. Now let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. I'll use python 3 dash m when and I'll call my virtual environment mhj env. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And now it's done. Now let's run this command again and see if we now have a new virtual environment. So as you can see, we have got this MHJ ENV environment. So we are done with creating the virtual environment. We have also checked if there were any existing virtual environments. We created the virtual environment. We verified the virtual environment. And now it's time to activate the virtual environment. I'll use source, the name of my virtual environment, which is .MHJ ENV slash bin slash activate and as I hit enter my virtual environment will be activated. This MHJ environment at the beginning of line indicates that the virtual environment is now activated. So after creating and activating our virtual environment there's still one last step left. If you remember in my Jupyter video I talked about kernels. So let me go ahead and list all the kernels that are available right now and as you can see we have got only one kernel available right now. Another way for checking this is from here, clicking on the kernels, and you can see that Python 3 is the only kernel available. Now what we need to do is add that virtual environment as a kernel to our Jupyter Notebook. So for that, first of all, I'll need to install ipython kernel and then run this command. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And here we go, it's done. Let me clear the screen for you and run the next command. This command would add my virtual environment as a kernel in my Jupyter Notebook. So let's run this. It's done. I'll probably need to restart my Jupyter Notebook. 
Now, as you can see, I've got another kernel it, and it's the same virtual environment that we created earlier. Let's continue from where we left off. Okay, so this is done. Now what we need to do is install TensorFlow. I'll be running pip install TensorFlow to install the latest version of TensorFlow. We don't really need to install Keras separately because it comes packaged in TensorFlow 2.0 plus. Let me move to the terminal, clear it for you and run pip install TensorFlow. Now this is going to take a couple of seconds. And it's done. Let's move back to the Jupyter Notebook. So the last step was importing the libraries. So let's go ahead and import TensorFlow as TF. So it's imported. So as you can see, it's the latest one, which is 2.1.0. So from TensorFlow, import Keras. Let's execute this. So it's 2.2.4, which is the latest version. So that's about it from this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and share the video with your juniors and your peers and encourage them to learn deep learning. And if you want to see more similar videos, please subscribe. It really helps.